Hi everybody, Sean here from Lines in Wax, back at you with another discography ranking video. Today I want to talk about the, in my opinion, quite possibly the greatest band to have ever existed, but that is of course subjective. Yes, Swans are my favourite band of all time, and my attention has been drawn back to them recently with the release of their recent new album. I think their 16th studio album, I could be wrong there, I've lost count. Uh, it's entitled The Beggar, and it came out in June 2023, so all eyes back on Swans. I decided now is the time to do a Swans discography ranking. Now, this is going to be a long video, okay? So bear with me, maybe watch in parts, but we're going to go through every single Swans... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? We're going to go through every single Swans studio album we're going to go through every single swans live album because they matter if you know anything about swans you know that the live albums matter just as much if not more than the studio albums i'm also going to go through a few of the eps as well there'll be 30 swans records in total that i'm talking about today and i'm going to organize them from what i think is the worst all the way through to what i think is the best i will say up front, again, as I did with my Dark Throne retrospective, I mean, sorry, my Dark Throne ranking, there is no bad Swans album, in my opinion. There is ones which are a bit weak, but you won't get any spicy takes on some of the Swan stuff here, because I like all of it. Just a disclaimer, if you're looking for someone to slag off some eras of Swans, people like these rankings when, you know... Um, some of the stuff on the lower end of the rank gets a bit of a paste in. I've been guilty of doing it myself. Some of my discography rankings really, like, you know, stick the fucking, you know, knife in and twist it. Like, you know, so, um, yeah, there's going to be none of that here. I, I I really, really like Swans. So I think this is enough of a disclaimer. Um, really, we should just get into it. There's going to be a lot here to get through. So let's begin. Actually, before we begin, let me touch on two more things. The first thing is, why haven't I done a Swans retrospective? Um, that would be, you know, make the most sense to do, being as Swans my favourite band, but there is already a fantastic Swans retrospective that goes into every single album. Admittedly, some of the more recent ones, like the 2019 and 2023 releases, are uh, missing off this, but the channel Deep Cuts did a Swans uh, retrospective. Uh, it was called A Guide to Swans, but it goes into every single studio album and in enormous detail, and it's well worth a watch. I'll link that below. I can't make a video that's better than that, so I'm not going to bother trying, so I'm just going to stick with my ranking video. And secondly, I might as well clarify what isn't going to be included, because that was easier probably than explaining what is included. So what isn't included in here is a lot of the... Um, there's some official bootlegs that are included, but most of the stuff that um, Jarbo to see what the member of Swans Jabo released on her own back when she had her own website in the 90s and the 2000s before Swans reformed in 2010. She offered like all these different like bootlegs from around the world from the tours in the 90s and the 80s and um, she would like customize like the CD covers or whatever. So a lot of people um, count these as official releases. If you go on Discogs and stuff, you will see them listed. Although I will not be counting any of those in my ranking i'll only be counting um live albums that have been released in you know, some sort of official capacity even if they were a bootleg they were initially picked up then by the band and released then they'll be included otherwise they will not be included so just to include just to clarify there i will also not be including singles because the band did quite a lot of singles especially in the 80s and the 90s and there is some stuff here which is important like time is money bastard and a screw being two examples of early singles which are really important to the swan sound but i'm going to exclude them because they are singles so without further ado let's get into the swans ranking it's been a few minutes now and we haven't even started so i best get on with it in 30th place then in from my opinion, sorry, in my opinion, the worst Swans release ever in 30th place is the live album from 1990, Anonymous Bodies in an Empty Room. Now, the reason why Anonymous Bodies in an Empty Room comes in last place is because of the audio quality. As I said just now, Swans have a lot of bootlegs or bootleg quality grade kind of live albums, and Anonymous Bodies in an Empty Room is the worst sounding one from the official canon i suppose they were so this was an official release but it was released on the side by the band you know it's not like on a, a proper label or anything like that and it was released in the era of the burning world tour now this is a very interesting part of the band's history the burning world was 
probably a very unusual misstep in the band's like history, and we'll get to the Burning World, you know, in the list, and we'll talk about it. But the live album for that era showcases that the somewhat sterile and awkward sound of the Burning World it shows that sprawling, you know, properly in a live environment. We get to hear those songs breathe and unfold and be in a much better, you know, a much more enjoyable form. The trouble here is, is that it sounds like shit. The sound quality is incredibly poor, clear enough that you can perhaps make out what's going on, but be reft, therefore, of any f- impact or feeling due to the lack of fidelity, I suppose, in the in the song. So, yeah, that's why this one gets the, the last place treatment, I'm afraid. In number 29 is another live album, 1987's Feel Good Now. I had this, um, I picked this up for about four or five quid, which was ridiculous because it's worth a, a lot more than that now. Um, so this is another live album, uh, this time from the Children of God tour from the 80s. And um, this one was... Um, Again, originally a bootleg, like released on the side by the band, but it does eventually get re-released on a label and was, again, eventually released and remastered for some fucking reason and released by Michael Gira's own label, Young God, in 2020. Now, this one, to be honest, is more or less in the same ballpark as, you know, um, Anonymous Bodies in an Empty Room. The sound quality is fairly low but i do prefer the songs on here this is the you know the children of god era quite possibly one of the best swans albums spoiler alert (laughs) but you know it's it contains very bad live recordings of those songs unfortunately so you know that's why it's down here this is definitely for swans completists and for people who want to hear everything then you know you start going off the beaten track a bit and you've done all the live albums like the main ones and you've done the studio albums then this is going to be one of the first things you come across. So it was nice for um, Jira to remaster this, but to be fair, it's still pretty poor, to be honest, in, in the grand scheme of things. In number 28, in 28th place, is 1996 EP Der Tour ist Zoo. And I probably butchered the name of that, but it's German for The Door is Closed. And this was kind of like a, uh, a precursor to the soundtracks for the Blind album, which you... No doubt have heard of. It's one of their more, uh, one of Swans' more um, well received records. But to, to this fucking EP, man, um, it's basically, from what I can tell, and it's been a while since I've listened to this actually, because I don't actually own this. It's one of the one of the Swans things that I don't own. It seems to be some of the songs from um, what that I ended up on soundtracks to the blind, but sang in German and some alternative takes and different versions. Considering it's an EP, it's fifty three minutes long. Because, you know, this is Swans. They do not fuck around when it comes to short releases. So, you know, you get your money's worth for an EP. Um, and it was, um, I think, remastered and, and re-released uh, again by, by Jan Jira and Young God maybe a few years ago. But up until that point, it was quite hard to come across this. And it was one of those, like, oddities um, from the Swans back catalogue. But, yeah, I mean, this is, again, as I said about um, Feel Good Now, it's a Swans completionist item. There is no value to a new listener or someone who's exploring the discography for the first time of coming here anytime soon. It's not to say the stuff on it is particularly bad. It just doesn't really do anything for me. I never listen to this. and I am the like such the biggest fucking Swans fan in the world, and I, I'll never listen to this fucking thing. So that kind of probably says it all really doesn't it of course you know opinions are opinions so let's move on in 27th place is the first ever swans release ever from 1982 it is the self-titled swans ep now this this is weird because it's swans in name but it doesn't really feel like swans it's you know it's a far cry from the punishing experimentation that the band would originally become renowned for Jira and his ever-revolving musician friends are no strangers to growth and change especially in their their 40-year career they've done all sorts of different different things different types of music the Swans uh, self-titled EP is probably the only time um, where it it feels like it's from a time from an era it feels like it's from the early 80s do you know what I mean it also feels like it was the only time they truly belonged to a singular scene or movement and didn't stand out on their own. And it's loosely associated with um, many parts or tropes of the the no wave, no wave scene. Not that I'm a, 
an expert on the no wave scene like i like the suicide stuff and, and that's probably about it really um swans is an awkward record taking the lurching bass driven beats and rhythms of the post-punk world and chopping it awkwardly with um swathes of uh you know that again that no wave weirdness i um I don't think this is a million miles away from a pre-Swans band called Circus Mort, which had Michael Jira on vocals. So it's kind of like the logical jump between that and what we get with the earlier Swans records, like the full lengths. But, you know, um, yeah, I mean, this isn't bad. It's just not the greatest thing. And it's not what I come to Swans for, to be honest. It doesn't get that much uh, rotation from me. And, you know, it's it's a historical document to me rather than a... Uh, an enjoyable release that I listen to all that often. In 26th place is another live album, perhaps unsurprisingly. I'm not selling these live albums, am I? But trust me, they there's some amazing ones. Yeah, so in, in, in uh, as I said, in 26th place, it is Kill the Child, which is another live album. I think it was a retrospective live album. It was released like in the 90s, but the material's from the 80s. So it's culled from several different sessions. So it starts awesome and then some of the other um kind of like sessions in there just they, they don't really sound all that good annoyingly it's released on a cd um but it's only one track there's like what fucking eight songs or something on this and they're all as one song which is not a good look um i hate that i'm just like filter through them and the quality of them is um mixed you know, so this is 80s era swans, brutal, punishing, just enormous slabs of noise, but the sound quality hampers it. There are some interesting live versions here, like um, the version of Screw Holy Money is just absolutely mind-blowing, but, you know, you can get better quality versions of that in the same style, because it's different from the album version, elsewhere, and, you know, Kill the Child is once again a completionist's document um but does contain that intense brutality that people do come to the early swans records for this is as you could probably tell by the name of it uh, a very disturbing listen um and you know it, it's a it's a it is a document there of a period of swans which is just uncompromising in every single possible way so i enjoy it but the audio quality is Pretty terrible, if I'm honest with you. In 25th place, now this is <laughs> it's going to ruffle some feathers. In 25th place, our first um, full length album of the list, in 25th place is 1995's The Great Annihilator. Now, that is going to fuck with some people, I think, because a lot of people like The Great Annihilator. Um, I like The Great Annihilator, but it is by far my least favourite swan's studio album it is um also perhaps um coincidentally or otherwise the most accessible swan's studio album with songs that you know run between two to three to four to five minutes long which is uh you know it's not something that people know swan's for right but you know that's not to say it's bad you have this just basically like a really dense echoic fucking experimental rock sound on the great annihilator the band had gone from like the more extreme end of the musical spectrum musical spectrum sorry through to like you know a more light and airy folky sound and then into a more experimental and like long form like folky acoustic sound with all these other like lush instrumentation and stuff like that and then in the mid 90s they landed on the great annihilator um which is a weird one because it seems a bit stunted in comparison to the others in this era. Not to say it's bad, though. Like I said, it's very somber, very dark. It is, of course, Swans. There are some fantastic Swans tracks on this. Um, I Am The Sun is... It feels like it's heavier than it actually is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listen to it and I go, oh, that's not that heavy. But in my mind, the, the way that the song fades in and out and the lyrics, it makes me think like... Oh, hang on, this is, in my head, it's it's heavier than, um, you know, than, than it actually is in in, in 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 reality. One of my favorite Swans songs is on this thing, She Lives, is stunning. Really heavy, like, acoustic guitar-led, 
miserable song <laughs> with um, Michael Jira on lead vocals. It reminds me of some of the stuff they did in the Skin side project. Um, it kind of sounds like that, kind of stripped back. Songs like Mother, Father and Killing for Company. Um, you know, it's not a bad album. It's a very long album at 67 minutes. Well, it's not that long really compared to some, some songs albums, but 16 songs long, you know. Yeah, it's, I just, as you could probably tell, I'm struggling to like, really say anything about it it doesn't really you know gel with me it's not awful I'm, i've not got a lot of bad things to say about it but it doesn't really jump out at me at all you know and uh, i don't even know where my cd version of this is i haven't listened to it in many years it just doesn't really resonate with me unfortunately so yeah that's why it's far down the list anyway number 24 then 24th place is 2013's live album, Not Here, Not Now. Um, this was from, I think, the Seer period. It was the Seer tour. This came out. I saw this tour live. I bought this limited edition CD as soon as it went up on the Young God website. I can't remember what number I've got. Um, you get a lot of interesting um you know interesting things on here so there's some acoustic demos on this as well which aren't really all that good you know i do like to hear the acoustic demos that jiro does on these limited edition live albums um but the what we see here are the gestations of songs which would go on to the to be kind album and it's interesting here because there's like a, a quarter three quarters of an hour suite uh at the beginning of disc two where you get The Seer, like the title track of the, the album The Seer, bleeding and playing into and becoming Bring the Sun, um, which then becomes a Toussaint Louverture um, piece. And that song, to, uh, Bring the Sun, Toussaint Louverture, mutated into you know what we get as the, the centerpiece of the To Be Kind album. And then from there, the finale of the Glowing Man album with that track, like the end of that trilogy of fantastic albums you get bring the sun reprising one more time as the band form the song the glowing man from that and and it's really fascinating to me that this central like i don't know chest this central like torso of the band's insanely fo you know form switching madness that was the like the post-rock, dare I say post-rock, era of Swans 2010 to 2016, that like main body, that main chunk of constantly swirling, formless sound was there from like 2012 in the form of the Seer or whatever it became the Seer, you know, those huge like experimental shifts that they made in like 2011 and then recorded that as the Seer became like this constant re recurring motif that this part was this like huge like i said torso of sound was always like in the in the live set and you see that here in a transitional phase as the cs slash bring the slant bring the sun slash two sun overture 45 minutes long here you know that's that's a fair fucking that's a fair listen that's a hell of a song of 45 minutes long um again the quality on not here not now sound quality does leave a little bit to be desired and that's why i have um rated it so low but this is don't get me wrong this is a essential live album when it comes to swans and um you know it's what i a good example of what i was saying at the beginning of the video is that live albums matter when it comes to swans and really like understanding the music um, if anything, just for that 45 minute piece alone, but like some prototype songs here, of course, of what would later go on to appear in studio sessions as the To Be Kind album. So very, very interesting. Listen is not here, not now. In number 23 is a studio album, 2019's Leaving Meaning. Now, I like Leaving Meaning. I love the lush, serene, meditative quality that Leaving Meaning has. Um, and there are also a few songs on you that are quite uh, sinister because it is Swans after all. It's Michael Jira. There's always a creepiness to what Michael Jira has to has to say. But there is something that I cannot shake. And judging from what I've read over the years, that 
quite a few other people cannot shake either and that is a feeling of disappointment because Leaving Meaning came after a trilogy of albums which were you know they changed the course of musical history they are the albums that swans leave as a proper permanent mark you know those are the albums everyone knows those are the albums that are just uncompromisingly honest and open and you can track like i just said about the not here not now live album you can track the development of the sound and it is a journey the whole thing is just this i've not ever heard anything quite like swans in this era and i don't really think i will ever hear anything quite like that again on those free records leaving meaning takes the same kind of formless at least it appears formless like walls of sound like the massive like attack on your very person that swans is but it pushes it on you in a much more how can i say pleasant way there is um like i said still a few disturbing like weird like creepy melodies and like grooves but for the most part like this thing is much more uh meditative it's much easier it's almost a spiritual kind of feel to it you know um, you've got that ritualistic repetition that is at the core of all Swan's music, regardless of if it's sheer horror or, you know, shimmering beauty. Um, but, but um, you know, leaving meaning kind of meanders between the both thematically, but then, you know, also kind of just takes it easy musically as well. After the absolute sonic sheets that were, you know, the glowing man, um, leaving meaning left much less of a mark in my opinion um that's not to say it's a bad album i love some of the songs on this thing the song the hanging man um is one of my favorite swans songs i'm really excited to hear that they are still playing that song on the upcoming uk and european tour because they never actually did a tour for leaving meaning because uh, of covid so um you know, I'm looking forward to hearing that live. I love the reworking of Amnesia. So track four, Amnesia, is a re-recording of the song Amnesia from the album Love of Life. And I also like the songs Sunfucker, Cathedrals of Heaven, and um, I also like It's Coming, It's Real. And that's not to say I don't like the other songs, but those are the standouts for me anyway. And I really enjoyed um, Leaving Meaning. It's 90 minutes long, so it's no small <laughs> feat, really, but... Um, you know, I can't shake the fact that it is uh, an in entirely intentional reigning in of the sound. You know, it's, um, as someone on Rate Your Music said, which uh, tickled me, um, a, fa a fairly recent review, if you want to go on and look at it, I can't remember the name of the, the review writer, but the tagline is like, Diet Swans. <laughs> and I, uh, I, can't, um, I can't shake that. That's, that's very true. It is, leaving meaning is definitely Diet Swans. That's, uh, that's what I say. Uh, nice tagline there in 22nd place is another studio album it's 1992's love of life now by the time the 90s rolled around the sheer sonic brutality and bare bones industrial um headache that was swans had thawed out and become a sparkly kind of morose dark almost neo-folk not that i would you know compare swans to like stuff like death in june not even on albums like love of life even though they have the same morose um acoustic quality love of life um i let me just talk about that cover art love of light love of life look at that cover art it is absolutely outstanding it's by a, an artist called um derek thomas and i have that tattooed in full color on my arm um it is incredible i don't really know what it means i've tried to attribute some sort of meaning between this and the previous album which had similar artwork uh without the fire and the blood um again i i've i've tried to attribute meaning but at the end of the day it, it just it's just so striking that um you know it it uh, it's always kind of uh, resonated with me and um yeah i have it tattooed so i love i'd love to get a print of this if i could just look at that fucking thing it is absolutely um how striking is that but yeah i mean it is um for the most part fairly inoffensive dark folk music is a uh, love of life um the title track is a is a weird one the album version of the title track is three minutes long whereas the single i've got the 12 inch single version as well and 
the, the single version is like eight minutes long. And it kind of works better in that galloping kind of long form way. You know, on, on the uh, album itself, the version of the song on the album seems a bit stunted, which is unusual. The songs here are not the biggest fan of. Songs like God Loves America. Like, what the fuck is that? Do you know what I mean? Let's be honest. The Sound of Freedom, not the biggest fan. I do like the, um, Her. The song Her is phenomenal. This, the band at, at this stage were using, um, you know, along with like this kind of like basic folky kind of songwriting on the acoustic guitar, the, the music was still dark and still had this almost industrial bent, at least in the production style of the drums and the rhythm section. So I think, uh, you know, that is still really heavy. The bass is still really heavy on this. But what made, what makes this... Um, you know what makes this stand out is is the sampling on this, and the sampling would be used um, far more prominently on some other Swans records in the '90s, which we'll talk about in a bit. But the sampling on this is is fantastic. We've got like one, two, three, four, five, six untitled songs, which are just samples, and some of those samples are really like they have such a way of like grabbing you and gripping your like your heart or your your head and and you you're in there with that sample and there's also a big sample in the song her which is of jabo herself um as a child um maybe in her early teens i think and it's so moving and it really feeds into this you know it's like a feedback loop from the samples that are used and the ambience that the man puts behind it that like walls of noise and sheets of music that unfold then into the actual tracks of this album. Now that is really interesting and that's really good and it's incredibly unique, but like I said, some of the songs themselves are a bit shit, like God Loves America as a good example. I really like the song In the Eyes of Nature, really heavy bass line on that, which is reminiscent of the 80s stuff, so that's really good. And as a whole, you know, uh, Love of Life is a enjoyable trip. It's an enjoyable, uh, you know, journey in music it's just that there are some low points and um that's why it comes fairly fair, fairly far down the list uh yeah so we're coming almost now to the one third of the way through and um in a very similar vein to love of life and i um it was difficult for me to rate these in this order and maybe on an, on another day in another another week in another part of my life i would rate them the other way around but in 21st place is another studio album, and that is The Burning World from 1989. Now, Love of Life is arguably more interesting than The Burning World. There's arguably more going on on Love of Life. There's, you know, like I said, all that stuff I just said about the sampling and that depth and that, like, you know, cerebral kind of connection that you get. You know, you get that. You don't get that on The Burning World. What you get on The Burning World is swans as a product um of the success of children of god um the album children of god swans were signed to a major label this is the only time in their history they were signed to a major label uh, mca records they were signed to which i think is some sort of subsidiary of universal so this was their big this is the big fat fucking sellout record most bands have one and um swans the burning world is uh, Swans' is, um, <laughs> cello album. So, love the, love the album cover. Again, very striking. Very beautiful. Love that, um, love that close-up. Is it, um, what's the name of the, the painter? Is it a different painter? It's a fucking photographer. Robert Mapplethorpe, is it? That name just came back into my head. I hope that's right. But yeah, the thing with uh, The Burning World, it has that acoustic, folky kind of feel um, that Love of Life has, but it's not as dark, it's not as morose, and it's a bit more upbeat. And the songs are, I think, better. I like the songs on this. When I first heard this, it was a horror show. You know, I was into um, filth and cop and early, like, industrial stuff. I got two swans from bands like Godflesh, you know, who, um, Frobbing Gristle, stuff like that. You get swans in that same kind of Venn diagram of horrible music, right? And, um, you know, when, it, when I started working my way through the swans discography and I landed on this, I was just, like, completely... My mind was blown, really, as to how how far from the beaten path they had gone. I was like, well, how are they doing this, this like, sparkly folk music? And why aren't they doing these huge slabs of fucking noise? What happened? But regardless of what happened, there are some good songs on this. When I got used to it and I really started to get into it, I love the songs on this. The production is lush. 
the multiple multitude of uh, instrumentation. It's very, um, very bright, very clear, very well made. It's produced by Bill Laswell, of all people. Um, and now that I'm more familiar these days with Bill Laswell's like style and some of his projects, I, it, it, the fact that he did this album is weird to me. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know why they kind of came together to do this. This Burning World doesn't sound like anything Bill Laswell or Swans would, would do. I mean, those two names do not equal the Burning World, in my opinion. So that, that's what makes this even more of a fucking anomaly than, uh, than most things. But yeah, the songs. There's a song called Let It Come Down. Beautiful. The song Mona Lisa, Mother Earth. Very weirdly upbeat with like uh, all sorts of fucking weird percussion on it. It's, you know, it's still very, very enjoyable. She's a Universal Emptiness is another beautiful Swans track. And I also really like uh, the song Saved. The lyrics, whilst sad and introspective are also quite boastful it seems to me it's like you know i don't deserve it but i am saved i also get like the same kind of religious themes from this than i did on children of god i get the same kind of vibe you know with that there's also a song called jane mary quiet cry bleh, jane mary cry one tear it was the end of side b and um when it breaks into like the chorus or the main bit and not too fussed on that but there's a build-up at the beginning of that song with just Michael Jira and an acoustic guitar, and that's one of my favorite parts of a Swan song. Um, you know, he's just narrating this story, and um, it's beautiful. It really is beautifully sung. It's really good. I don't again. I don't like it when the song bursts into like full song, but the, the intro to this song, the first minute or two, stunning. And of course, this album also has the song "God Damn the Sun," um, a song that I associate with a, a personal event. Um, the, basically the loss of a friend, the death of a friend. When we were, you know, my, me and my friends were a lot younger, we lost we lost a friend. And um, they, they enjoyed this song. So this song I associate with them. If it's not fucking sad enough anyway, um, there's there's that association too. And it's a song I play once a year on a certain date for that reason. And it, it always gets me. God damn the sun. What a fucking song. Um, even without the personal associations I have with it. Um, beautiful song, honestly. Um, Michael Jira and Swans have maybe disowned this one a bit. Um, Jira personally thinks it was a mistake. Um, I think a mismatch in the producer and just the whole major label world and, uh, you know, experience was something that didn't go down very well for Swans. And, um, I think it, it, Michael Jira said something along the lines of like, you know, it's, I've worked hard all my fucking life. I finally paid off. Who wouldn't have done that? Who wouldn't have gone for that fucking, you know, opportunity? And it didn't work for Swans. Um, you know, and then you, from this point onwards, you see a complete control of everything. You know, Young God Records comes about and, like, Michael Jira takes, like, takes, he, you know, he mantles that every fucking aspect of Swans from this point. But, you know, I know I really like The Burning World, even if Michael doesn't. There are plenty of people out there that do like it. There's also plenty of people out there that... Uh, I think it's a fucking bag of shit, but you know, um, that's it is what it is. It's a weird one, and I've spent a lot of time on it now, so I'm going to move on because there are far better, far better um, Swans albums. And anyway, so we're going to go and talk about another studio album, and this marks the um, the one third. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a long one, like I said. This marks the one third point, and that is 2023's The Beggar. This has just come out, um, and. A lot of the stuff I said about leaving meaning, um, I see and feel and hear in The Beggar. Personally, I prefer The Beggar to leaving meaning. I just went out and I just got the double CD. Looks fucking stunning. You know, the artwork is beautiful. And, you know, it, it's, it's like I said, about leaving meaning. We've got the, these suspenseful kind of meditative approach. Uh, these meditative tracks, you know, they, they tend to float around, you know, the 10 minute mark, really, rather than like the 20, 30, 40 minute mark, as most swan songs of the past 10, 13 years. But like here, they, like I said, they float around the 10 minute mark and they're beautiful. They're beautiful walls of noise, really are like this ambient fucking sound collages, but they're sound collages made by groups of people 
using instruments in unity to create one unified meditative sound rather than sound collages being, you know, someone piecing everything together on a computer. This is much more organic. And then again, I dare, dare say that word again, meditative. You know, it has that quality to it. There's also a streak of finality, dare I say, through this. Now, um, people have been talking online about like, oh, you know, Michael, Michael Jira is... Uh, you know, he's maybe he's dying. Maybe this is um, Swans's version of you know Black Star by Bowie. And I don't, I don't think that's true personally. I, I found Jira has always dealt with themes of death, you know, and um, these kind of underarching motifs to his his songwriting. Um, it does seem a bit more prominent here than usual. And there's song titles where the lyrics aren't maybe as stark as the song titles. But the song titles like Michael is done no more of this you know stuff like that and it's like unforming is another one and unforming probably comes from the cloud of unforming which became the cloud of unknowing and then unforming was maybe comes from that i don't know but like paradise is mine they you know there is a finality there is a lot of death in here you know and J michael jira how old is michael jira 69 maybe 70 do you know what i mean it's like he's not getting any younger um, I think, you know, at this time in, in life, maybe he's reflecting on his mortality more than he has in the past. And that does, um, that does bleed through. I think I did listen to an interview recently with Jira and he was kind of asked this question in, in so many words and he denied it, that there was a purposeful, you know, um, theme of this um I'd, I'd have to find a try and find a dig that interview out if i can i'll put it in the description of the video but yeah i mean musically it's not a million miles from leaving meaning i think it builds beautifully on the template that leaving meaning left for us in these sparkly you know introspective walls of sound with minimalist beats and things get big you know things do blow up but don't expect every song to build up into like a you know, uh, an orgasm of sound, you know what I mean? There's no epic payoff in every one of these things. Um, I also want to draw a little bit of attention to track 10 um, in the track list online. If you're on Spotify, if it's track 10. If you're on the CD, um, it's on disc 2. If you're on vinyl, then you're fucked out of luck. Um, track 10, The Beggar Lover. Now, this combines... Um, this is the part three of three in a trilogy with the looks of it. You know, there was a Swan side project called The Body Lovers and The Body Haters. The Body Haters doesn't really count. It was more the same thing. But they come together on a compilation CD, Body Lovers, Body Haters. I've got the CD somewhere. The Body Lovers is very, like, very interesting. Um, it's kind of like the soundtrack to a film doesn't exist. It's like, if you've viewed soundtracks to The Blind by Swans, then you'll, you'll enjoy The Body Lovers. It's that kind of, you know, sampling and constructing songs out of pre-existing samples um part two of that trilogy is uh appears as a bonus track on the special edition of another swans album and part three is here um which adds again to the finality of this record but you know part three of three is what people are talking about a lot if you go online and look at people talking about this album a lot of people are talking about the beggar lover and that is interesting there's a lot of songs and or more more like vocal pieces and background vocals the choirs and the walls of sound that were perhaps part of previous songs in the last 10 years or so those are brought back here in the beggar lover and they are molded into a new 45 minute long soundscape along with other elements that we haven't heard before the song leaving meaning itself from the previous album is repurposed entirely over a completely different groove and completely different beat so really unusual how they've decided to do that so what seems like you know a bonus track just for the cd version is actually an incredibly introspective callback a a medley i suppose a reprise in, an, in a perverse kind of way and um there's again the same interview i listened to when about the themes of finality and death um jira admits that they will be playing the track leaving meaning in the style that it appears on the beggar lover live on the recent tours which is really interesting how they've decided to do that so yeah it's worth checking out the beggar just for the song the beggar lover not to disagree or take away from the rest of the album 
Um, fans that are new to Swans may find this a little bit listless. Like, you know, you're floating around in a sea of a sea of noise without a rudder. Um, and that I can kind of, you know, uh, relate and I agree with. So maybe don't start here if you're new to Swans. If you're new to Swans, why are you this far into this video? Um, but, you know, I, I enjoyed The Beggar and I'm going to give it a few more listens because I've listened to it three times now and I need to... Um, I need to set some more time aside and spend some more time with this and really get like under its skin. And um, who knows, maybe the the um, positioning will, will change, but not so much further up the list because, you know, my all-time favourites by Swans are always going to be my all-time favourites. And speaking of which, we should get into the second theory of this and really get stuck into some, uh, some of the juicier cuts, as it were. So, in 19th place then, is My Father Will Guide Me Up a Rope to the Sky. Now, this is the comeback album. When the Swans first disbanded, it was in the late 90s. They reformed and came back in 2010, and this was the album that they returned with. Um, My Father Will Guide Me Up a Rope to the Sky. It's got a bluesy kind of Americana kind of... Um, feel to it the album cover gives me like i've got the vinyl and you can see it better than you can probably on the screen here and it seems like a new life you know forming in the universe it's it looks like space doesn't it but it's actually like dust or some sort of explosion or smoke and I, when you actually look at it properly but yeah this has like this bluesy kind of americana which no doubt was a holdover in songwriting style from the band angels of light which michael jira and some of the other members on this iteration of swans were in together before um before they uh you know came into this iteration of the swans band so there's that holdover of style and the trad transitional style of getting back into swans material um interesting this is as it was the formation of what would become the titanic like slabs of noise and like ritualistic uh songs and sounds that the band would do throughout the 2010s um so this is like the um gestation of that but it doesn't have that epic scale it's still got a lovely warm analog sound fantastic production a lurching shuffling feel um you know with like really analog and like i said really warm sound across the the percussion and the um the uh, bass lines and, and and so on and so forth so the tracks on this like um reeling the liars in and um inside madeline maybe their vocal lines are much more suited to like i said a um angels of light you know songs rather than swan songs but songs like my birth eden prison no words no thoughts they're much more in the wheelhouse of what swans is if you want to listen to something creepy, check out track five, You Fucking People Make Me Sick, with Devendra Banhart on, is that how you say his name? <laughs> Devendra, Devendra, let me Google it, hang on, we'll do this in real time so you can all laugh at me. Where the fuck's his name? Devendra Banhart. Devendra Banhart, I got there in the end, yeah, he's doing um, uh, guest vocals, along with I think Jira's daughter, on You Fucking People Make Me Sick, and it is very creepy indeed a very very creepy tense piece of work that is um the song little mouth uh tended to close out live performances in this era and you'd get all sorts of absolute fucking carnage and i remember seeing them live at roadburn i want to say 2011 possibly 2012 i think it was 2011 and like the you know the drum kit was in pieces by the end of the set and uh jira was just standing on the edge of the stage with a microphone and everyone else had kind of stopped playing and and he was just doing little mouth a cappella and that was that was um quite unsettling but yeah um my father will guide me up a rope to the sky if you like bluesy americana stuff in your noisy uh experimental noise rock then uh yeah by all means check this one out um great transitional album as the band went on to do some amazing stuff after this um but yeah in 18th place is another live album. This one is Real Love. Now, this was a bootleg, I think, that turned uh, official, originally a bootleg, and then was um, released by um, Anti Ant Atavistic Records. But yeah, some amazing cuts on this. Um, it's basically 
a back to early swans again back to another live album attempting to capture the absolute sonic carnage of 80 swans something we haven't touched on in this list yet in the form of a studio album um but like i said some of the live albums i try to capture this are lacking in sound quality um so real love on the other hand is much more um rounded out you get some phenomenal versions of songs like coward and money is flesh and anything for you are just absolutely crushing in you know in every sense of the word and you get the sonic clout behind it on real love that really allows you to get behind that and really get into the the absolutely punishing fucking experience that this would have been all those years ago so this gets ranked fairly high for one of those bootleg um, albums from early days but honestly absolutely punishing uh, this one again, tends to get overlooked um, in favor of public castration is a good idea um, but this is just as good if you know maybe not as good but it's still pretty pretty fucking punishing stuff and I well recommend listen in number 17 then is another live album it's Omniscience or Omniscience um, omniscience i think uh is how you say it. yeah omniscience so this is the live album for the love of life era um love of life being that kind of dark morose neo-folk kind of album that they did in the mid 90s which we've covered and has that really unique sampling in it now that carries over into the um into the uh you know into the live arena i'd be lying if i said like, like i said before i wasn't initially i'd be lying if i said i wasn't initially underwhelmed by swan's 90s output you know as a fan coming in from the sonic destruction that was filth cop greed etc 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 omniscience on the other hand you know the live album that's for the love of life album that era showcases those rigid dark folk songs in the stretched out sprawling live incarnations one would come to expect more from swans you know it's a way to really hear these songs breathe just like Anonymous Bodies in an Empty Room, which was right at the beginning of the list. But this sounds fucking great. This is like a soundboard recording or something rather than a fucking, just a piece of shit fucking bootleg. And it sounds perfect. Even the morose, electronic-laden and acoustic guitar-driven rock melodies that the band were peddling through this time are turned into these gigantic epics. The songs, therefore, feel more organic, vital, and alive and i often say that omniscience is one of the most overlooked releases in swan's back catalog especially when it comes to these live records if only for giving us this completely different angle on some of the 90s stuff um it doesn't help that omniscience is hideously out of print it's really fucking you know you can buy it online but it's going to cost you a few bob like as they say um i wish Instead of shit like Feel Good Now, Jira would fucking remaster and re-release this. Um, I think that would be a really good idea. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm full of good ideas. <laughs> but no, honestly, Omniscience is uh, the underdog, I think, of the Swans live albums. And um, it sits nicely in this, um, you know, coming up to halfway through the list now. And it fits nicely here. It's really, really good and a really enjoyable listen. In 16th place is the studio album holy money now holy money was um like the second album in a, in the same year there's you get greed and holy money in the same year holy money came second um and it's pretty fucking bleak to be honest with you it's it's that early swan's brutality but filtered through like an almost electronic industrial you know vibe you get songs like um a screw holy money is on here money is flesh coward all on here these are classics stick your knife in me coward is just brutal so fucking brutal the song coward like oh my god money is flesh as well like oh my fucking days like money is flesh in your hands you know a screw here's your money you know open uh i'm not gonna even fucking say those lyrics out loud not on this channel you know fucking brutal absolutely brutal um, with like this punishing, repetitive, rhythmic, fucking, almost sexual, hateful fucking energy. Um, you know, there's clearly a theme here, isn't it? Just look at that album cover. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's, there's always been like the little man, the slave, the worker, the parasite being crushed 
there's always that kind of feel to early swans and and this is fucking in your face about it um in a cold harsh industrial way and it's um it's a stark and terrifying listen but there is a better album than it and that is in 15th place greed the album that came just before in the same year um part one i suppose of this um so this album also has the track fool on there there's the, the song fool is on both of these albums in, in different forms as is money is flesh there's um the original version of money is flesh on here um but this greed has a oh, even fucking grimmer production like that hypnotic minimalist fucking kind of sound that really dark and fucking brutal coldness um songs like anything for you and stupid child are just fucking brutal i i, I you know you say brutal you think of death metal but no this is brutal it is like absolutely stark you know harsh devastating heavy slabs of noise and music the title track is just creepy horrible disgusting everything the holy money is and more um you know you can listen to these things back to back i had this on vinyl i'm pretty sure i sold it for a lot of money but i did have it on vinyl um it is massive absolutely massive very cold very like electronic and dense um despite you know having like a four-piece band it wasn't like all samples but it's really dark and I'm I'm running out of words to describe it, but it's horrible, absolutely horrible. And um, yeah, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend any fucking album on this list. But you know, greed and holy money are um, are something else. And um, yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. I, I'm you know, it's getting to the point now where every album is just an absolute fucking belter, and um, it's becoming difficult to uh, differentiate. And it is purely just my personal opinion well the whole thing's my personal fucking opinion right but it's purely my fucking um love for swans um and the way i view swans that is the only difference between any of these albums that i'm going to talk about any of them are are all worth a listen at this point you know um but yeah in 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 light of that let's let's move on for you know i lose my track and it's a long fucking video so it's easy to lose my track in 14th place we have another live album it is we rose from your bed with the sun in our head this was the live album for um well i say it's for my father will guide me up a rope to the sky era but that era quickly fucking changed um i saw swans live in 2010 not long after they reformed um they literally fucking my father had just come out and they were playing very 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 bare bones versions of what would become I guess the seer. By the time you get we rose from your bed with the sun in our head, um I saw them again maybe six months later, um, on the same tour in up in Europe, and I was just fucking astounded by how much Swans changed from playing some of the tracks on um My Father and from playing, you know, some old songs like um beautiful child and shit like that sex god sex they're playing these old songs the swans never really play old songs live not that often you know they're always focused on the album that they're touring and writing new music on tour for the next album but yeah this tour they did play old stuff but by the time um what i'm trying to say is by the time we rose from your bed with the sun in our head came out they were well into developing these intense sheets of sound that would become the seer that would become what swans was known for you know and and got their second wind and and got their new found fame and and recognition for and you could see that here for the first time in a massive track um called the seer i crawled now this takes um the song i crawled from an earlier ep and it meshes it up with the song of the seer which is basically the intro to i crawled at this point is this huge fucking long form jam of explosions of sound and percussion and it for it goes into i crawled this this classic swans track so it's really interesting again to see that gestation going all the way back to not here not now that i talked about you get that here 
And also what you get on here is some beautiful acoustic demos of tracks that appear on the Seer. You'll get stuff like The Mother of the World and uh, The Seer itself. All these, all these amazing songs, you get them in acoustic form, but only on this CD. And, you know, it's beautiful. They are some really, really beautiful fucking um, versions here, you know? So... Yeah, amazing live album, fantastic, really good sound quality. Again, got to be something like a fucking, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's got to be a um, a bounce from the mixing desk. It's got to be. It, it sounds phenomenal. Really, it does. In 13th place, you've got the EP Young God, um, which is a kind of an offshoot from the Cop album, where they did these really sludgy, slow, deathly slow drones of like horrible like it's like it's like metal in slow motion and you get a variation of that on the um young god ep slightly more melodic <laughs> slightly more as in there's more variety in jira's voice but um this is still absolutely unsettling in every sense of the word i crawled is um be my father you know the lyrics on that be my father it's just it's disturbing when Michael Jira does it, and we'll come back to this later on. It's tracks like um, Raping a Slave and This Is Mine are, oh man, so powerful, so heavy, and the riffs are really nice, and the bass is popping. Um, the vocals do sound weird, like they're really like breathy and like um, quite heavy in the in the mix, but um, it's intense, it's, it's terrifying, it's... Um, and settling <laughs> and uh, that's everything early swans is in a nice a nice little package and uh at what maybe 20 20 odd minutes long 25 minutes um you know like just like the cover you know says designed to be played at maximum value uh, volume just turn this all the way up and just be completely destroyed by the uh, industrial drone in sludge the noise hell of early swans um, bit of a muddier production here than on Cop, but um, you know the accompanying era, like uh, main album of that era, but still stunning, terrifying in every possible way. Um, yeah, <laughs> in twelfth um, place is White Light from the Mouth of Infinity, the studio album from nineteen ninety one. Now, White Light, Mouth of Infinity, um, was such a breath of fresh air after the burning world. I like the burning world now, but as I said when we covered the burning world a little bit earlier in this album, it was um, perhaps a bit stunted, perhaps a bit, you know, restraint into what swans could actually do, even in that style of music. And we get that perfectly here on White Light from the Mouth of Infinity. Um, I love, again, the album cover. Again, by Derek Thomas. This comes first, and then Love of Life comes afterwards. So how do we get this one rabbit man guy person, right? He's on his own. And then on Love of Life, there's two of them, and they're on fire. I don't really know how that happened, but the, the, the image of them on fire on Love of Life is is so striking. But yeah, this is the original image that you get, at least in the Swans world. I know Mike, uh, sorry, Derek Thomas has done a lot of these paintings in this style. Um, but yeah, this is... Um, Again, very striking in of itself. What a really unusual album cover. But yeah, this is what I was saying. The Burning World sound expanded on. And this is what a Burning World should have sounded like. Let's let's be honest. Now, this has been remastered recently, I will say. And you can get... Uh, I say recently, blimey. It was like fucking nearly 10 years ago. But it was remastered by Young God uh, and Jira. And it, honestly, the remaster is fucking just beautiful. It really lets this like wall of beautiful sparkling instrumentation it just it's alive it dances it is stunning opening track um better than you really sets the tone with these crashing like bright fucking piano and not piano fucking synthesizer sounds and like you know the like upbeat sprightly kind of post-rock <laughs> dare i say considering we're back in the early 90s um there's a key change and then the song kicks in with a much more morose uh swans um you know feel song for dead time is fantastic there's a song called love will save you which is a bit depressing but i absolutely love the lyrics to this love will save you um but it won't save me and the song failure again I mean, this is another one of those swans um, 
staples, isn't it? Failure. Um, the sinking lead weight f- failure of failure. Yeah. It, it, again, brutal lyrics. You know, very simple, almost quite comforting acoustic song with nice sparse instrumentation. Absolutely fucking brutal lyrics. Love it. Um, Miracle of Love. Again, I think is one of my most um, one of my favourite Swans songs is Miracle of Love. But it is it is a ballad. It's done in the style of a ballad. One second in your presence. Is that the lyrics? Is a miracle of love. I can't remember the lyrics. <laughs> Put me on the spot. But fuck it, it's beautiful. Really beautiful song. Honestly. Beautiful album. You know? Um, it, it's got like the, the gothic rock kind of edge to it. You know? Um, you also get Christoph Hahn cropping up here. It's worth mentioning Christoph Hahn as a staple here. He's the um, slide guitar player in the more modern iterations of Swans, but he's in this as well. And um, it's beautiful. Beautiful um, album. Honestly, it is. And I, I, I don't feel like I could do it justice with words. I don't feel like I've done this one justice. You know, I've kind of ad-libbed most of these. Um, is ad-lib the right word? You know, I've just gone in and just spoke from the heart isn't it but when it comes with um other than um the great annihilator which i don't really like that much um i did i struggled with words for that but i struggled with words for white light and i really love white light so i don't know why but it's beautiful that, that's that's the end of it. that's the end of it really white light from the mouth of infinity is a beautiful album and i highly highly recommend in 11th place is the gate Oof, what a fucking album this is a live album from 2015 absolutely fucking outstanding again phenomenal sound quality on this the version of frankie m on this half hour long (laughs) what nearly 30 minutes long version of frankie m absolutely fucking outstanding like these i i cannot fucking like put into words like the the fucking slabs of sound that form the song frankie m like on this album it's so visceral and raw it is just fucking beyond like words honestly track one frankie m half hour just get it in your life like fuck you know i saw swans on every uk tour they did between 2010 and the end of the trilogy lineup in like 2017 um and I've got a copy of every live album they did too, of the back of those experiences. Uh, most of them, not all of them, actually. Um, so even though this is, you know, down in 10, 11th place, right? You know, we've still got a lot to get through. Um, despite that, um, that, that speaks for the quality of um, above uh, everything above this. But even though it's um, in 10th place or 11th place, you could easily argue that the gate captures swans at their absolute fucking peak. Um they're nuts deep in touring to be kind and um the slabs that would become the transcendental glowing man record um are being developed here on this this album yeah this live album they're captured here um the glowing man is one of my favorite swans albums we'll get to that because at the top of the list spoiler alert um you know it's it's up there at the top you know amongst the all-time greats um you get the songs that appear on glowing man here on the gate in much more unhinged form it feels like this music could go out of control at any time and just completely fucking envelope everything and everyone you know um there's also a really cool fucking um version of a little god in my hands the song a little god in my hands from um that was on to be kind it's got so much funk to it it's 13 minutes long now instead of like five or six or seven and it's so much different than the album version and it's fucking just amazing it's so good i everyone who's a fan of swans has to hear that um tracks like like i said track one frankie m or the bring the sun into black eyed man which became the glowing man um they're both nearly half hour long are absolutely fucking monumental pieces of work you know that in the current form that they display on this record are some of the greatest pieces of music that swan's recorded uh, ever and in fact any artist has recorded not that you could really you know um 
you know really compare many artists to swans um you can um you know the cd which is hard to buy these days is, is worth the price of entry for those two tracks you know or hand, hand it down online and listen to it it's, you know fucking great but I, I was lucky enough to get this at retail price from young god uh, you know still quite a lot because it was a fundraising cd um yeah so there are some low points here as well it's not perfect you know that's why it's number 11 and not like number one or number two um the track the apostate slash cloud of informing um which went on to become the glowing man's cloud of unknowing um at least in this current form drags far too long and relies too heavily on the residual apostate melody so it's like this woo kind of sound um that's built around um the apostate in its original form was part of the seer which is uh, you know, and a highlight of the live sets at the time that's why it's not surprised that a song came out of it in this way um similarly the demo tracks that attacked on the end here um aren't really that good to be honest um i always enjoy checking out the acoustic demos that jira puts in with these live albums but here um they leave a little bit to be desired there is an exception of course and that is the excellent acoustic version of finally peace finally peace is one of my favorite songs uh, songs by swans and a stunning and fitting end to the trilogy which we'll come to but the acoustic version the bare bones acoustic jira acoustic version here is fucking beautiful in overall acoustic form and hearing that again after all these years recently was um uh such a treat such a fantastic treat and and, and the gate is uh fucking just what a fucking album like the gate <laughs> absolutely unbelievable beautiful 10th place then let's fucking get down top 10 the final third let's get through it 10th place cop 1984 fucking brutal slabs of fucking sound like sludge metal you know this is basically a precursor to shit like can Eight and fucking i hate god but just slowed down to a fucking crawl it is absolutely brutal um i feel like i've said brutal millions of times when talking about the old swan stuff but the 80s swan stuff is nothing short of fucking brutal the first track half-life it's just got that like absolute pile driving riff where it's just gonna fucking smash your head open and like um jira's just like work with a purpose work with a purpose don't make a wrong move that's just the lyrics like over and over again work with a purpose don't make a wrong move and it's just like oh my fucking god this is so hypnotically just devastating second song job it's just like you know he's like it, it slows down even more the, the guitars are even more dissonant like you, you you get track one you're like well how can this be any heavier how can this be any more disgusting and then you get track two and it's just like this dissonant guitar kind of just i don't know what the fuck they're doing to the guitar what's norman westbrook doing here i have no idea but he's making some horrendous fucking noises out of this guitar and, and michael jira's like cut off the arms cut off the legs cut off the head get rid of the body and it's just like get rid of the body get rid of the body and it's just like what the fuck am i listening to one of the first times i heard cop it really um really fucking blew me away like you know like, like i said i came into came into swans through the early stuff and um because you know i was chasing that kind of um musical punishment i suppose and fuck did i get it did i not half fucking get it why hide again it's like track three why hide he's like fucking screaming like why hide your property another amazing song i mean i could go for all of these fucking things but fuck me like beautiful beautifully devastating suffocating misanthropic nihilistic disturbing fucking horrible music swans cop uh just one of the nastiest things ever made i think personally gotta be fucking proper nasty isn't it cop number nine ninth place 2012's the seer what a fucking one album this was when this came out this fucking blew a lot of people away myself included i remember sitting with headphones and listening to the whole thing it was a leak it leaked yeah i i bought the fucking vinyl so i don't care but i listened to the leak and i was just like okay so this is interesting this is brutal and punishing and just exhausting in every sense of the word but in a much different way than it was in the 80s when they started doing that exhausting fucking transcendental music again that would take you out of your fucking body in the in the 2010s you know in more modern times it was a bit more a beat 
there was a lot of energy, a lot of emotions, a lot of fucking maelstrom of just different things going on. And um, I mean, the sea. What, what? What the fuck is that? Look at that album cover. What the fuck is that? Honestly, such a fucking strange album cover, and it, it sets the tone. Like the, the the opening track, lunacy, says it all. This is lunacy. Some highlights of you know we we got songs on there. Sorry, we got songs on here that are um half hour long, and we've got some songs on here that are a minute and a half long so it's a, it's a bit of a mixed job really mixed jobby like it's about two hours long in total and it is a fucking mission to get through this on the first you know listen because it is so fucking unlike anything that i'd ever heard before um it was bizarre even with the um having the live albums and seeing the band live it still took me a while to get through this year like to get to get it in my head do you know what i mean um the song mother of the world as this fucking riff that's like din 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 you think it's annoying me doing that there right this song does it for fucking nine minutes din 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 and it just builds this fucking tension like there's nothing as fucking tense as that and it's just like by four minutes in you're like i am going to fucking headbutt someone like <laughs> and then like you've got this sweet the song the seer 32 minutes of absolute oral destruction and transcendental fucking vibes and then you've got the the track the seer returns which is immediately after it like some sort of reprise which is much more musical i suppose than the destruction of the title track and then that's sandwiched between the track 96 or 93 avenue b blues which is about swans original like rehearsal space in new york and that returns that fucking like catastrophic fucking musical destruction kind of like little mouth off the um previous album my father will guide me up a rope to this guy and i think live maybe they were kind of meshed together little mouth and uh, 93 avenue b blues they're just fucking absolutely fucking experimental stabs of sound and destruction and musical aplomb <laughs> <laughs> you've got more normal songs like song for a warrior and the daughter brings the water these are like much shorter songs and um i love there's the the, the the final three on this avatar a piece of the sky and the apostate are just i've i've exhausted my descriptive words in 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 describing this the seer but it's more of that just absolute oral carnage um and like i said the seer is exhausting you know um, but what's better than the seer? I hear you ask. I hear you cry. You go, come on, fucking hell, lines in wax. Let's get this fucking video finished. In eighth place is To Be Kind from 2014, the studio album that followed the seer, right? And that just, if anything, probably perfected the perhaps sometimes directionless, like, you know, um, experience that was the seer. It was fucking all over the place. Whereas perhaps to be kind reigns it in a little bit. You know what I mean? You start, you get into it. It's still two hours long. You get into it, the songs are maybe seven, eight minutes long. You get three or four tracks. So it's like seven, eight minutes of like that weird kind of swan sound, you know. But it's got that like, there's more of a focus on the underpinning groove that maybe Jira and the rest of the band explore then on top of that. But the groove kind of keeps it pinned, whereas the seer kind of meandered a lot more. I think the the explorative, experimental post rock sound that began with my father and then the seer kind of really was perfected in To Be Kind. And um, yeah, I mean, there's a song I mentioned it earlier, the live version, um, the years, the years, the album version, thirty four minutes long, Bring the Sun slash Toussaint the Overture. Oh my fucking god, like what can I say about this this song, this centerpiece of this album? Bring the sun. The first part of this, Bring the Sun, is just beyond words. It is indescribably good. Um the bass playing is just fucking outstanding. Like this is just crashing, building, forming, and forming, just absolutely beautiful i really like other songs as well the title track is the closest this thing out is again kind of like 93 avenue blues bit more together than that but it's still fucking just this enormous 
fucking just reeling, screeching, fucking just unbelievably nasty fucking walls of noise with Jira going, to be kind, to be kind, <laughs> over the top of it. And it's just like, okay then. But it's really cool. The song She Loves Us, 17 minutes of fucking bliss right there. And Oxygen, eight minutes of absolute fucking funk and groove man oxygen sounds like something fucking mr bungle might have done later in their career you know but um I, what the fuck is this the lyrics on oxygen are just hey there mr skull like what what the fuck what's going on on oxygen don't know don't care fucking brilliant like what an album like to be kind is probably a good place to start with with swans really i would say you know but yeah, let's keep it going before I implode. Number seven in seventh place out of 30 in the song's discography, Ruiz the Best, is Public Castration is a Good Idea, the live album from 1986. Now this, now I've been talking about how brutal now and compromising and how just fucking oh, brutal these fucking early albums are, these early live albums, and this is the one that fucking trumps them all. Real Love Comes Close, it does, but like put public castration on and the first if the first 30 seconds of you if the first 30 seconds of this doesn't appeal to you then you can save yourself you know a very long trip through hell put it on and if those opening fucking oh my god like money is flesh right the version of money is flesh on this is weaponized this is weaponized music it is fucking heavy as fuck i think the two heaviest albums ever recorded are Public Castration is a Good Idea by Swans and um, the early Peel Sessions by Napalm Death. Like, both of those things are on both ends of the spectrum going in different directions. Just the most punishing fucking things you could ever hope to hear, at least as far as band music goes. I don't want to get into the noise and atmospheric kind of worlds and experimental and jazz worlds. We're talking about rock bands and the most extreme extre- the extre- extremities of that sound you can get got napalm death's peel session in one direction and we've got fucking swans public castration is a good idea in another direction and this is an absolute test of patience uh of an album and i can happily say that as a super fan of swans it is fucking exhausting listening to this thing it will grind you down to nothing and i think that is quite evidently the point um this is sparse this is as sparse and as unforgiving as swans ever get it is i mean i would i don't know again i've said this in other videos i don't wish my life away or wish that i was born in different time periods but i would just i would love to have fucking seen this band live you know what i mean in this era of just Yes. I can't I cannot describe this anymore. I if you've never heard this, go and listen to it. It is absolutely fucking punishing. Uh in every sense of the word. I feel like I've said that a lot this this video. Number six, Swans Are Dead. Another live album. Nineteen ninety eight, Swans Are Dead. So Swans Are Dead was basically the you know the final album Swans did. It was a, before they came back in the twenty tens. Um but in nineteen ninety eight it was the final album they released. <clears throat> Uh, it was, um, how can I say this? You know, just basically the Swan song. It was uh, two CDs, um, like a, a tour from 1995 and a final tour from 1997. That's it, I've just had a quick look. Um, and this is, you get um, kind of like the Great Annihilator era songs, which I don't particularly like that much. And they are absolutely fucking dragged out to just like, death <laughs> i mean it is it is the epic goodbye for swans at the time you know you had um you've got songs on here which hint hint like enormously to what the band would do in the 2010s and it feels like to me like jira struggled a lot with what he wanted swans to be or what his purpose was maybe as a musician right and i i'm, I'm just guessing here i don't know michael jira right you know but like that's what that's what I get from all these different kinds of sounds that Swans did through the 80s and the 90s. And then you hear something like Swans is dead and it comes out after the band is gone 
and you're like, wait, what? Why have you stopped now? You are literally on the cusp of unraveling something incredible. Like, you are literally doing something now that, like, nobody else is doing, at least not in this raw, visceral way. And what Swans Is Dead does is it takes songs from, like I said, the Great Annihilator era and some of the songs that appeared on soundtracks from the blind. And there's a lot of older songs as well that are redone. And, uh, oh my life. You know what I mean? It's just, they were really onto something special. There's a sadness to this as well. It really is. There is a, there is a sadness to it. For them, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I'm doing this justice in describing it, but there is some absolutely fucking incredible performances here on this, this tour. The song Feel Happiness um and helpless child they're like 18 minute slabs of noise if you like what swans was doing with to be kind with the seer with the glowing man then you will fucking love swans are dead because they're doing the same here but they still had jarbo in the band at this point with the synthesizers so you get that synthesizer sound over the top of everything and it gives you this ethereal fucking just otherworldly um kind of vibe and um jarbo sings a lot as well on some of the songs that were recorded for studio albums with Jira on vocals. Perfect example being I Crawled, you know, Be Your, Be My Father, Come Into My Room. Really disturbing song. It is terrifying when Jarbo sings it rather than Michael because there's so much more vulnerability in it. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not doing this justice. Really, I'm not. But, you know, this is one of the most beautiful yet terrifying albums ever made swans are dead uh if you've got the time and the patience then you will be massively rewarded 142 minutes of just ethereal sadness somber you know somber fucking raw emotion in in music form musical form and that's it and that's what you get with swans are dead um yeah really sad album fucking brilliant though absolutely brilliant stuff in fifth place, very similar to Swans of Dead, fifth place then, Soundtracks for the Blind, the final Swans album in the original run from 1996. Um, again, this was more of a retrospective. It, it it wasn't new studio material. Like, The Great Annihilator came out the year before, I think, and then this came out. And it collects together everything that Swans had left, everything that Jira and Jabbo had left, at this point, all their found sound, all their samples, all their like rehearsal recordings, whatever. And he went, Jiro went through all of it in an attempt to draw a line under swans. And this is the result. And it is overwhelming in its sadness, in its uh, beauty, and also in its terrifying force. Um, you get songs like, I'm just looking at the first few tracks of side one, you get song red velvet corridor which is more of an intro than a song and you know from there that this is going to be different to like love of life or the great annihilator which is led up to this those are the albums that came before and then you get this absolute fucking anomaly of a record dropping afterwards red velvet corridor three minutes of like this haunting drone just over and over and you're like what the fuck and then the second track i was a prisoner in your skull does more or less the same there's no percussion, there's no guitars, it's just fucking droning fucking synthesizers and sounds. And you're like, what's going on? What the fuck's happening? And then you get this mad fucking sample going in. You're dropped in, like, boom, into this sample. Like, you're supposed to fucking understand what's happening. And you're like, what in the fuck? And you just you just have to go with it. You go with it. Helpless Child on, on you know, track three is the first song, I guess. You get acoustic guitar, really slow acoustic guitar, and Jira just... At his miserable, morose, raw best. And that helpless child, after a long time with just Jira and his acoustic guitar, it's a 15 minute song. It just explodes into this post rock kind of style. It is massive fucking sound um, with these ethereal synthesizers over the top, just like what was happening on Swans of Dead. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And the entire album kind of develops and, and goes on in this in this way you know another 140 minutes give or take of the same kind of system of you know these huge fucking sprawling songs or these weird electronic synthesizer noisy droney passages accentuated with like or punctuated rather with these samples which just like they did in love of life 
and the album before this dialed up to 11 here these masses of fucking samples from all sorts of stuff you've got jira's dad i think talking about being blind you know and all these other fucking themes of loss and like these uh, man it is overwhelming it's a massively overwhelming listen it's very sad um you know and if swans didn't come back and they didn't reform you know this is what we would be left with and this is such a fucking puzzling and bizarre document to finish off with basically like, this is everything we've got left here you are fucking have it and and this is what this is what we get it is it is uh the beautiful days to, to quote the song of the same name off this but through a cracked lens you know and um i don't know i feel like i'm not not describing it properly i'm not not giving not doing it justice how can you put something like soundtracks for the blind into words go watch that deep cuts video <laughs> it does a much fucking better job than i did anyway let's fucking run this out then number four fourth place deliquescence 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 live from 2017 um m o the fucking greatest swans live album is um deliquescence deliquescence how the fuck do you say that uh, i don't have this one it's the only one i don't have because it fucking sold out they were selling it on their final tour um it was completely fucking sold out even though it was three thousand of these handmade cds it was completely sold out by the time the um by the time the, the tour came around to my town or near to me so you get you get um some to be kind songs on here you get some fucking um uh what's the word i'm looking for glowing man you get some glowing man songs on here and the interesting thing about this right is that you get new songs as well even when this lineup of the band had publicly said that they were no going to they were no longer going to continue um in this form this lineup was disbanding thor harris the percussionist for this era had already left the year prior and that kind of the silver lining to that not that i don't miss thor uh, terribly from swan's music um is that you had a keyboard a synthesizer organ mellotron player called um paul wolfish and paul wolfish stood in in place of thor harris as the sixth swan on this tour and on this tour what paul did was bring back that sound that was missing from the only thing that's missing from the enormous albums like to be kind and the sphere is what i was just talking about from soundtracks for the blind and swans are dead is jarbo's organ that fucking synthesizer which oh my god gives such a fucking beautiful otherworldly kind of feel is back and we get that on new swans do you get this 2010s era swans with that beautiful ethereal synthesizer sound in there and oh my fucking god like it is not any of the studio albums it doesn't come on the studio albums after really it doesn't really happen on leaving meaning uh, and um the beggar it doesn't really happen on to be kind and all that either so deliquescence or deliquescence whatever the fuck the album's called i can't say the word i should have googled it before i started um it has that and it stands unique and it stands alone the cheese stands alone for that fucking reason look at this thing there's also a 45 minute song on here called the knot which is not which is not available anywhere else and it is fucking it, it, it was you know it, it, it's yeah i can't i can't i can't my I, my head isn't working anymore my head my, my brain is implored in i think like a cheap submarine rest in peace all the those who are affected by that submarine ship but yeah it, it's it's fucking just too much it is overwhelming and it's also 155 minutes long so <laughs> it's very fucking long there's a, a 36 minute version of the glowing man there's a half hour version of the cloud of unknowing and then you've got the 45 minute version of the knot and then you've got like uh, four or five other songs as well um it is monumental towers of sound pillars of exploding music and that's what you get with with deliquescence the fire look at that fire that's what you, you that's what you get that burning forever burning fire of the soul or whatever the fuck beautiful absolutely beautiful epic stuff um deliquescence i cannot recommend this enough chances are if you're a swans fan you may not have heard this because it, like i said it's very hard to get a hold of um unless you want to pay a stupid amount of money um try and find it online you will not be disappointed honestly it is fucking outstanding 
third place. Third place. Now, this would always have been number one. In fact, when I started this list, it was number one um, until I actually took a look at myself and I thought, you know what? I need to be honest and I need to move some of these things around. So from the original first place, now in third place is Filth from 1983. Um, this is what made me fall in love with Swans was here in Filth. Like I said, big fan of Godflesh. I read in an interview somewhere, Justin Broderick was like, um, what were the main influ influences on Godflesh? Uh, Throbbing Gristle and Swans. So I, I fucking went straight down on Spotify uh, and I listened to Filth and I was like, what the fuck? But yeah, Swans is my favorite band in the entire universe um, outside of like some grindcore bands, I guess, and Godflesh. And um, they have a long and meandering career as we've covered in this video. And um, the most savage one as far as studio recordings go, is filth. You know, you think cop is fucking brutal. Um, I think probably cop is more emotionally draining because it's slower, but filth is just savage. It's the band's debut album from 1983. It's a clanking, grinding beast dominated by the uh, usual presence of, unusual presence rather, of two bass players and two drummers, like, you know, Fuck you, Slipknot. <laughs> this shit is fucking... They did this shit in 1983. Um, the guitar's an afterthought, almost, in on this record, you know? Um, some people argue that Cop is heavier. Um, is heavier. I, I, I think, you know, that has merit, but... Um, I think Cop is probably more akin to metal slowed down, you know, than anything that appears on Filth. I firmly believe that the um, scraping mechanical abortion that is filth far surpasses any form of heaviness that any uh metal music could possibly hope to convey genuinely um yeah filth was incredibly ahead of his time and the more influential is far more influential than we could probably measure to be honest you know the, the opening track the lurching stay here is um is what filth is all about it becomes apparent very quickly it's like some horrible fucking machine has come to life um it's clanking around um you know screaming and fucking crying about all sorts of horrible stuff power for power track three i think power for power one of my favorite songs in the entire fucking universe and the drums are absolutely devastating um the song says a lot to me um not only on an interpersonal level with the games that people play with each other and power games and shit but about Western culture and capitalist uh, consumerism and culture in general, you know? What I was saying just maybe a fucking hour ago now about greed and holy money, um, <laughs> the themes there being much more on the nose, a little bit more subtle, lyrically at least, here on Filth, but the sonic fucking racket that Filth made was so much louder than, than that of, of, of greed and holy money. Um, yeah, I mean, the song Thank You is almost danceable. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to some fucked up dances if they're playing Thank You by Swans. Uh, Weakling. Um, the song Weakling, I think, leads, leads the template for Godflesh. For every Godflesh song recorded before 1990. Bit of a bit of a jokey take there. But yeah, it sounds... Filth sounds like the world slowly dying. And, um... Fuck, you know. I own the original pressing on vinyl. Have to. You know, I paid for it. Cost me a shitload of money. It's got a fucking mule kick on it. Absolutely beautiful i could fanboy about this shit for, for weeks so i'll i'll stop now um let's move on what's better than fucking filth number two children of god from 1987 off my own children of god like now this is a transitional record it came before the burning world um you know so it's got that like folky neo-folk dark acoustic stuff it's also got brutal fucking early swans as well and it zigzags back and forth between jarbo's lush fucking you know um piano led ballads and like songs like sex god sex and beautiful child which are just terrifying you know and you know swans is different than every album but this album encompasses a few eras in one the early stuff is some of the hardest music you could possibly want to hear and um you know we could also like i said argue it starts thawing out and holy money or greed or whatever but they came just before this but the way i see it is that they had band added more elements to their sound more like you know more ammunition i guess and uh, children of god was you know the time when swans finally took their foot off the brutality pedal for at least half of the time so you get like these lovely beautiful songs just as you do um 
get these enormous fucking sprawling epic really heavy songs you know the band has also um done cleanly produced stuff before children have gone but but this is the for the early stuff this is the most well produced album they have the sound is bigger marking uh, making sorry swans dirging repetitive drones sound almost like anthemic bangers let me just look at new mind like fuck you know what i mean the full band sound comes to an abrupt stop now and then and you get these jabro piano pieces coming through like i said the shift in focus to these kinds of compositions featuring so heavily uh in the whole of the work is you know the important element in how children of god changed the trajectory of swans going into the next decade and a burning world came after this and um you know it, it just changed everything really but when you look at like the all-encompassing immense stupidly heavy songs like sex god sex and beautiful child the first time i heard beautiful child it's one of the only pieces of music that has genuinely frightened me the first time i heard beautiful child lying down with headphones on i was like holy fuck this is terrifying you know um yeah so if someone tells you children of god is swans raining in a bit then that is wrong <laughs> it's essential listening for fans of uh any sort of rock or, or you know metal music definitely and that leaves number one then that leaves the number one pick this let's get it in the net it's the glowing man from 2016 to me the the ultimate distillation of everything that swans had done up to that point now if you looked at um uh, promotional material for the seer that's what jira said about the seer this is the culmination of everything that they've done in the past merged together into one piece of work of course at that time jira wouldn't know that he would go on to make albums like to be kind and and uh the glowing man the glowing man to me is my most listened to uh swan's album um but actually filth probably is but when i think of swans and i think of the sound that they have this is what what comes to mind you know what i mean this is absolutely absolutely seismic in scale um everything i've spoken about you know in the past in in this video accumulates in um in this and and that feels like a bit of a cop out for me to like go yeah i don't have to talk about number one. Oh, thank god because i'm running out of words to describe this music but no it really is it is literally the sum of its parts you take everything swans have done and this is the ultimate distillation of it. And that's why it's kind of weird that they've continued beyond the glowing man. It feels to me like the logical conclusion to absolutely fucking everything, you know? Um, it is the most smoothest and most uplifting and transcendental and meditative and beautiful for how enormous and crushing and just devastating and punishing and tiring and exhausting this is to listen to. It is also just like absolutely fucking soul affirming to listen to as well songs like cloud of unknowing and fucking frankie m like i've said you know in the you know the 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 live version of frankie m we were talking about earlier um like they're just they they they, they just oh I, i'm running out of words i'm running out of words but they're like what i'm trying to say is that they are so good like i genuinely couldn't see how swans could progress past this point you know it, it is everything they've done and the payoff of that all in one and you get that in the song the glowing man a 28 minute epic that rounds this album out more or less and um you get like all these different grooves and feelings and you get bring the sun comes back and bring the sun like reprised in here in the beginning of the glowing man it's just like you know i said how amazing bring the sun was on the previous um on the previous record to be kind here it just shifts up and down it changes maybe keys not keys but chords or notes i don't know i don't i don't know but it, it changes up and down rather whereas the original bring the sun kept the same note or chord or whatever and, and this switches it around a bit to much more devastating effect and it just reminds me of standing there live watching this every time i've seen it live just being completely fucking blown away and it is the closest thing i've ever had to religious experience is watching swans and I, I don't think that's an overblown thing to say it's fucking absolutely fucking outstanding and the glowing man here encapsulates all of that you know as the final song and then the, then the album rounds out and finishes with the song finally peace and it's like finally peace is uh 
it's probably my funeral song. Finally, peace, right? You know, most people don't get, you know, I don't care. I'll be dead. Play what the fuck I play fucking Teletubbies if you want at my funeral. I'm going to be dead. They'll make a difference. But like, if I think of a funeral song, I, I, it was it's always a toss between Finally, Peace by Swans or Sycamore Trees by Jimmy Scott that was on the Twin Peaks um, Twin Peaks finale. Um, yeah, they're beautiful song. Finally, Peace is absolutely fucking gorgeous it is probably one of the most beautiful fucking songs ever written an arrow in space fucking like pull out on my fucking headstone an arrow in space thank you everybody for listening this has been a fucking journey and um the swans mean a lot to me they are my favorite band and uh yeah i just there there are no words really considering i've considering i've spoken right for coming up to an hour and 40 minutes on swans there are no words to really 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 like properly explain how good swans are and i hope you've enjoyed this video if you are still here if you are still here listening to this thing thank you because <laughs> you you're as fucking mad as i am but you know thanks for checking out the channel um i don't really know i feel like emotionally drained after this one it's been a hard one this one has um but yeah, I guess what I'll do is I'll catch you in another video sometime soon. Do yourself a favour. Go and listen to some swans. Out of the 30 fucking albums I just mentioned, there's got to be one that you may haven't heard or haven't heard for a long time or maybe thought, shit, I'll fucking check that out, actually. That's an interesting perspective. Um, you know, do that. It's such a rewarding experience diving in and out of this back catalogue. And, um, you know, I hope I've inspired you to listen to some of the more off-the-beaten-track swans stuff. So... From the bottom of my heart, then, I thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you again in the next one. Um, peace and love, and visualize total sonic annihilation. Over and out. <laughs>